Welcome back to the last video in my five part series all about some of the best adventures that can be had when holidaying in Norfolk. If you're new here, I've spent the last few days exploring both the North Norfolk coast and the Norfolk broads. Along the way, I've taken advantage of my visit being in May, a time when many local foods are in season. I've bought produce and treats as I've gone along. Today, I'm going to be trying these out. Some will be known favourites of mine, whilst others will be a new adventure. So the first thing that I'm going to be having on my Norfolk food tour is going to be the very well-known Chroma crab. I suppose Chroma crab is just about as Norfolk as what Yorkshire puddings are to Yorkshire or the Cornish pasty would be to Cornwall. Whilst the actual species of crab itself is no different to any other crab that you can find around the British Isles, what makes this so unique and so well known is because they live in very shallow waters on quite a chalky reef and those living conditions make the crab meat quite meaty but also quite sweet as well. We went along to this crab shed in Blakeney today and it turned out just to actually be someone's house so we went down like a track down the side of the house and there's this tiny little shed in the back garden. The guy who sold them to us, I think he is actually the fisherman and he was explaining that the crab was caught yesterday but instead of just buying a regular fresh crab, I've bought what's known as dressed crab. That means that yesterday he then cooked the crab and he's taken all of the meat out and he's put it in a dressing and then he's packed it all back in here so that it's low maintenance for me. All I've got to do is just start eating it. As far as I'm concerned or aware, I'm trying this for the first time. I'll dig in and see what I think of it. I believe that this is the claw that I'm going for first, the white meat. Oh my goodness, that is delicious. I definitely can taste the sweetness of it. Although I obviously don't have a other crab that I can compare it to, but it is, it's, it's got like a little bit of sweet tang to it. It's definitely a meaty fish. I wouldn't say quite as meaty as say like a tuna fish, but it is definitely meaty. Mm, that first bite was amazing. I'm more than happy to keep on digging into this. So, Ice cream wasn't supposed to have been on my Norfolk food tour, but being on the broads with the boat, we've come across an ice cream boat as opposed to an ice cream van, and I couldn't resist, and the guy said that there were three flavours, there was vanilla, chocolate, and mint chocolate chip, and he said that the vanilla comes from a local creamery called Lakeham Creamery, I do believe. So because it's Norfolk-based food, I'm putting it in this episode, and this is absolutely delicious and it's such a novelty getting it from an ice cream boat as opposed to an ice cream van. This place is so weird but so awesome at the same time. The next traditionally Norfolk food that I'm going to try are these Stiff Key Cockles. They've also got the nickname of Stewkey Blues and the reason for that being is I believe unlike other cockles, these ones have got this distinctive blue or bluey grey colour to them and that comes from where they live. So in this part of the country, they live just under like the sand and the mud and it gives it its distinctive color. This is supposed to be the best tasting cockle within the UK. I'm sure lots of people will probably like to say that about the cockles that can be located near them, but that's what we've been told here locally. The way in which these guys are harvested is the very traditional method that's been going on for hundreds of years. And they use very long or wide rakes and nets. I've definitely never had cockles before. I've been told that they're supposed to be a little bit like mussels, which I have had before. So here goes. I surprised myself. That's actually really quite nice. I, I have to confess and say, I think they look really disgusting. I do not think that they look overly appetizing but they're nice, they've got a sweet taste to them just right at the very end. It's like a tiny, tiny bit of, I guess like sand, but it wasn't It wasn't prominent when I was eating it. It definitely wasn't like I was chewing on grit. But yeah, I was, I was wanting to try it because it's typically Norfolk, these types of cockles, but I really wasn't expecting to like them, so I've surprised myself. 
Up next is going to be a selection of Norfolk cheeses. Yesterday when we went to Clay, we went to a really cute delicatessen come corner shop called Picnic Fair and they had a really well stocked deli counter of cheeses. They explained that the yellow labelled cheeses were all ones that were local to Norfolk. The first one that I'm going to go with is one of the Mrs Temple's cheeses and that comes from a farm that is just outside of Wales next to the sea. This one is called the Walsingham. I'm going to have it with a little bit of a cracker. That is nice. I would probably describe it definitely as being a hard cheese. Oh, it's got a little bit of a kick afterwards. Like once you've let it settle for a second, it's like a little bit on the crumbly side. That is really nice cheese. The next one that I'm going to go with is Binham Blue. This one is a rather impressive looking blue cheese. And it's got definitely some proper mold growing on the rind on the outside there. I don't usually eat blue cheese, but I'm willing to give it a go. Mm. Now I'm remembering why I don't tend to eat blue cheese very much. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> that is not nice. <laughs> okay, I need to quickly eat something else. So one more Mrs. Temple's cheese. So this is the last one in her range and it's the Wells Alpine. I'm trying to eat this quite quickly. Oh, I'm not a fan of blue cheese. Even if it's Norfolk blue cheese, I really want to change the taste that's in my mouth right now. So as I say, this one's called Alpine Wells. Infinitely, infinitely much nicer than the blue cheese. We were told in the shop that it's got like an alpine cheese taste to it, like a mountainous cheese taste to it. I'm not really too sure what mountain cheese tastes like, but I guess if it's like this, then I'm happy with it. I don't usually describe it as being hard cheese, unlike the blue one, which felt a lot more soft and almost sort of melty in the mouth. This one's definitely harder, but it's definitely got a different taste to, to this one, the Walsingham one. I like it, I'm gonna go for another one. The cheeses that are now remaining were all the ones that aren't Mrs. Temple's and I know that this one here is the Norfolk Goat's Cheese Mardler, even though it didn't have the yellow sign to show that it was from Norfolk because it had Norfolk in the name. We double checked, we said, I'm assuming that it is local. She said yes, and we said we would take a slice of this. I do rather like goat's cheese. Mm. That's really nice. I'm wishing that I had some like honey walnuts, maybe some figs, go really beautifully with that cheese. I'm a fan of the goat's cheese. <laughs> the next cheese is the Norfolk Dapple. Now we've got one that looks like this and then another one that looks like this and I know that one of them is the smoked Norfolk Dapple and then the other one is just called Norfolk Dapple. We didn't write down what any of these are called so we've had to try and remember but just smelling them this one just smells like like cheese like dairy whereas when I smell this one it's definitely got a smoked flavour to it. I wouldn't describe it as being a soft cheese. It's definitely a hard cheese, but you know when you can get hard cheeses that are on the softer side, so it's got a slightly creamy texture to it, but it's definitely got a kick to it as well. It's very, very mature. And I do rather like a mature cheese. It isn't so mature that it's gone mouldy and it's a blue cheese. That is delicious. Now I'm quite eager to try the smoked one. There's a couple of dogs that are just passing and smell the food and they want some. That was quite a big bite, but oh my goodness. That smoked one is absolutely delicious. It's definitely my favorite of them all so far. And the final cheese of our selection of Norfolk cheeses is the local Norfolk tawny. I suppose a little bit like the owl and this one it's very white in colour in comparison to the others that were a lot more yellow and it's incredibly soft to the touch so I've got a feeling that this is going to be quite soft and quite tangy. Interesting, very soft as I predicted but not tangy at all, it's actually very mild, it's a really nice mild creamy cheese. I like that one too. Up next is a cinnamon roll and I do believe that these come initially from Sweden but I'm gonna class this as being part of my Norfolk food tour because this was 
made freshly in the village of Clay and we purchased it again from the picnic fair shop. There was this one and there was another one that I think was more of a raisin bun and the woman said that this one was cinnamon rather than raisins and straight away I said yes I definitely want this one. So I'm gonna go with this slice, oh crikey, let's go with that middle part because you can see cinnamon all around and then the icing as well. And that's got just the right amount of everything. So there's not too much icing so that it's so sickly sweet and the cinnamon's not too overpowering and the bread's lovely and soft as well. That's delicious. Might not necessarily be the thing from Norfolk, but if it was baked here, I'm really pleased I picked it up. The next food that I'm going to try is what I've coined as being drunken fish. And what it is, is it's whiskey and ginger infused salmon. <laughs> the ducks seem to want in on the action as well. So it's whiskey and ginger infused salmon. And it's been smoked and it's been smoked at this clay smokehouse, which was just across the road from where we picked up the selection of cheeses. I've not tried it yet. I do rather like smoked salmon though. It's not cheap and this one especially wasn't cheap. It's four pound 97, so almost five pounds for this but it's very special very different it smells delicious it's not got as much of a kick as what I was expecting I tried whiskey in Scotland last summer and my goodness like some of them my throat burnt so much and I really like the kick that ginger gives but it's very very subtle in all honesty I can't really tell too much of a difference between this and just regular salmon, but because I love smoked salmon, I'm more than happy to keep on eating it. But I think I'm gonna start pairing it with some of those softer cheeses that we had from the cheese selection. 